So the other thing I want to point out quickly is that we also think about analytics and visualization architecture as a part of the architecture stack. And specifically because analytics are so closely tied into data management for smart grids that you really, in our opinion, have to think hard about the analytics. And analytics means more than business intelligence. I've just put up a chart here that's pretty complicated, but it shows our view of various kinds of network, technical, and business intelligence analytics, all of which we think are needed or should be con um, considered for the smart grid. So consequently, many of these things transform very low-level data that come from the devices into higher-level information that is ready to be used by either smart grid applications or by things like business intelligence. And there's kind of a gap in the industry to think about how to handle these low-level technical analytics. That's something that we think you need to think very carefully about because the raw data is just too much data for people to consume and understand. Many existing utility systems can't take that data, and it's necessary to transform it to make it useful to extract the key information. We also have a view of latency and latency hierarchy. And Jeffrey, may, may I apologize because you were asking about there's a gap, and in a sentence or two, what, what's the solution to this gap and the ability to, to manage and analyze that, all of that data? So the solution to this gap is to understand the need for technical analytics as part of the data management problem Got and it. to be able to implement a, a platform that provides a way to plug in or build those technical analytics that will do those transformations. Terrific. So un and understanding the need for that has a big impact on the architecture of the data management solution. I want to jump in, Jeff, and just for a second to remind viewers that if you have a question for for Jeffrey as we wind down the end of his uh, presentation. He'll be with us for the full hour, but do be sure to type those into your windows and we'll try to answer them uh, time allowing. Please yeah. Go ahead. I want to uh, move along uh, in, in, out of respect for our other presenters, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this chart just to say not all the analytics can be consumed in the same way. Some have to be consumed very fast, even at the millisecond level some at the sub-minute level, some in the minutes to days, and some in the days to months level. That leads to a view of hierarchy that tells us that we should not simply dump all of the data into a giant data warehouse. We really have to have a more sophisticated approach to data persistence that meets with that requirement for a latency hierarchy. Okay. Um, we need some special processing tools, especially for the fourth class of data I talked about. Complex event processing is a primary tool for handling event streams. Um, you're going to hear more about that in a later presentation. I will say we found this to be an incredibly important tool. There are excellent commercial platforms for the implementation of this new type of processing, complex event processing. The rule bases that you develop for this codify the business process knowledge that you need to, to do your smart grid implementations. The engines to do this are important because implementing yourself this yourself without one of those engines is quite difficult. So finally then, there are some tips that I would offer for dealing with smart grid, and I'll go through these very quickly and wrap up. Uh, one is to recognize that there are multiple classes of data that have different characteristics and need to be treated appropriately. Uh, another is to consider data sources and how they might support multiple outcomes, and that usually means multiple analytics processing the same data in different ways. Think about distributed architectures to help solve latency and robustness problems. That's different from the traditional utility approach of a relatively centralized architecture. Look at the entire smart grid problem when you're starting, even if you're doing AMI now. Think about where you're headed down the road. That helps you avoid stranded investments or avoid impeding the capabilities you might like to have because you have undersized something or neglected something that leaves you with the inability to go where you want to go in the long run. Design architectures to match data classes. Uh, as I mentioned, giant data warehouses aren't the answer. Look to new tools like CEP and do your business transformation planning at the same time as your smart grid. Um, and that is the end of what I wanted to offer. So I'll take any questions or we can move on to the next presentation. Yeah, thank you. L let me uh, do highlight a couple uh, interesting. And uh, w one uh, participant asked if there has been a a data warehouse or OLAP model yet created to handle some of the things that you've uh, you've mentioned? The only thing that really uh, applies here perhaps is that there is a schema 
that is an open standard for representation of utility data. That's the IEC Common Information Model. We certainly make use of it, as do many other people. There isn't really, to my knowledge, an OLAP model or a data warehouse model in particular for smart grids. Um, I don't know whether there will be or not. I suspect not. I think the Common Information Model is where a lot of the standards effort is focused and where a lot of the implementation effort is focused right now. We had another question around standards, and you did mention IEC, and it was, uh, someone wanted to know the role of IEEE in standards in this uh, data management effort. So the IEEE standards effort is focused a little more closely to the hardware. So you'll see them talking about things like they just made an announcement about adopting DNP3 as a communication standard for smart grids. I think I, I just saw that announcement today. You'll see them talking about things like uh, 61850 for uh, substation level communication and so on. They tend to be focused more on that, whereas you'll find NIST is looking at large-scale interoperability standards for systems like DMS and OMS and so on. Um, all of these standards efforts are valuable and um, my view is that the effort that DIEEE is making is um, quite complementary to the effort that NIST is making. Will large utilities likely make and manage their own data centers or will this function be outsourced in your opinion? Well, great question. I'm not sure I know the answer. It's been traditional for utilities to do all of this themselves in the past. Uh, we have seen some efforts to do um, outsourcing of this. We've certainly seen some vendors offering some uh, outsourcing services, but not in a large-scale way. My view is that we probably will see this, although I'm not sure it's the largest utilities that will do the outsourcing because they tend to have the largest uh, body of skilled people to do these things. I think we might actually see the smaller utilities doing the outsourcing of their data management for smart grid, whereas the largest folks will say, look, we have extensive IT departments and so on. We think we can do this internally. Uh, one more question for Jeffrey before we have to move on. Uh, a reminder to please, if you have a moment, do take, a, do take just a second to click on our uh, poll that you see on your screen. And uh, to remind you that you can ask questions using your little question window and that we will be sending the answers back to you, even those that we weren't able to get to during the webinar today. And a number of you have typed in the question about the slides. Yes, we will be sharing the slides with you as well, as well as a, a place where you can see uh, a recorded version of this webinar and even uh, in different pieces if there's a sp specific section that you want to see again. Uh, so, Jeffrey, uh, what, in your opinion, are the top high-value business problems that can benefit from the kind of smart grid analytics you've been describing, business intelligence, transaction analytics, or dot, dot, dot? Well, actually, I tend to think of it in terms of the utilities business processes more than um, that sort of functionality. So, to me, there are three big categories. One is operations, you know, the, the running of the grid. In the old days, it was keep the lights on. Now it's reliable delivery of high quality, sustainable economic power, and that's quite complicated when you think about integration of renewables and so on. So improvements in operations uh, are quite significantly supported by smart grid. Improvements in asset management, asset utilization, asset life cycle, um, condition-based and predictive maintenance, all supported by this, as well as the way consumers interact with the utility. I think that you'll find that smart grid crosses all of the boundaries in a horizontal way um, so it's not just a matter of supporting better business intelligence, it does that, but it can support better outage management, better grid control. All those things are impacted properly by a good smart grid design, and that's part of my argument about that latency hierarchy and how you have to think about all the different data sources and all the different usages you can get out of the data.